Hi, my name is Dan. I'm a sophomore and I major in physics with a minor in chemistry. Hi, my name is Joaria. I'm a freshman and I'm a chemistry major with a public health minor. Our project is titled Examining the Transmission of Ultrasound Through the Temporal Bone for Neuromodulation in Epilepsy. This research is under the supervision and advising of Professor Jason White at the Department of Chemistry and Physics. At the Biomedical Ultrasound Lab, we are analyzing the distortion of focused ultrasound through the temporal bone. Uh, we do this at four locations to verify if the energy is delivered accurately to each target. By analyzing the distorted energy, we can build a case for the usage of this neuromodulation method to treat seizures from other epileptic origins beside the hippocampus. So epilepsy is the fourth most common neurological disease and is characterized by unpredictable seizures. The Focus Ultrasound Lab at the Brigham and Women's Hospital developed a custom device to design uh, to transmit focus ultrasound across the temporal bone. This device provides therapeutic modulation of the neuronal activity at the hippocampus, which is a common target for treatment of seizures. This type of treatment can be classified under the term neuromodulation, which refer to a highly anticipated research topic in neuroscience and physics. For our purposes, we utilize the focus ultrasound's mechanical effect and not their thermal or capitation effects. Uh, so this had been proven to be safe in the clinical setting. And since it is low intensity ultrasound, it allows low energy transmission and therefore this method is very promising. So for our experimental setup in the lab, we have a tank that we filled with degassed and deionized water. And within this tank, we secured a transducer that emits ultrasound used in the experiment. This transducer is then connected to a pulsar receiver, which is connected to an oscilloscope, and that displays the wavelength of the transmitted ultrasound, which we're studying. Outside of the tank, one of our contributors created a 3D positioning system that is controlled using a MATLAB program. And this positioning system allows us to accurately move around the sensor, which was created attaching a 3.2 millimeter steel ball to a catheter needle. And it's positioned 5.4 centimeters away from the transducer. So the final step of the experimental setup is to ensure that the sensor is positioned at the focus of the transducer. And that we found by running a few scans on a MATLAB program. So once our experimental setup is all complete, before we can start taking scans of the temporal bone between the sensor and the transducer, we first have to take a baseline scan. And this is a scan where there is no bone between the sensor or the transducer. So in order to get this scan, um, we, conduct, we used the MATLAB program and we got a scan that is 28 by 28 millimeters. And um, ultrasound was collected at half millimeter intervals with no bone placed between the transducer and the sensor. Um, so ultrasound was sonicated in the direction of the sensor, and this is the field scan that we got. You can see figure one is the baseline scan. The dark red area is where the ultrasound is the strongest, and the dark blue areas are where the ultrasound is the weakest. So for the temporal bone scans, we first had to attach the temporal bone of the cadaver skull to the linear translocation system. And then we positioned this bone as close to the transducer as possible in the tank. This simulates the clinical setup, which um, is seen in um, clinical setups today with patients. Similar to the baseline, a 28 by 28 millimeter field scan was then taken. And once this was completed, we used the linear translocation system to move the skull four millimeters in the anterior direction relative to the transducer. We conducted another scan of the ultrasound field, and then we moved the skull twice more and four millimeter increments for a total of four ultrasound field scans, which you can see are figures two through five in this case. Um, we then took the baseline and we needed to subtract this from the temporal field scans in order to account for any artifacts. As you can see at the center bottom, these are our four scans at four targets uh, with plus a baseline scan. And visually, we can just see that the red area or the focus had shifted a very minimal distance, I would say about five millimeters. And these scans had been quickly conditioned to remove any artifacts for the visual purpose of this poster, this presentation. However, in the future, we will be um, using a more rigorous method we call baseline subtraction to further 
but and better accurately condition these data. So all the data that we have collected right now is preliminary data and we have a connected analysis on it. So in the future, with our four um, 28 by 28 millimeter field scans having been collected, we're going to use MATLAB to anal analyze them. So we're going to quantitatively assess the distortion of ultrasound through the temporal bone. And specifically, we are looking for refraction, diffusion, and attenuation of the energy through the bone in order to assess whether focused ultrasound can be delivered to other epileptic organs in the brain besides just the hippocampus. At this point, we would like to acknowledge anyone who has supported us throughout this research project. We want to thank Madiha Kabir for her being a amazing mentor and also Professor Michael Jordan for his work on the computer program. Thank you, Sarah Singleton and Adam Canfield for their previous work on this project. I hope you all learned something new about biomedical applications of physics and are interested in how focused ultrasound can be used as a neuromodulation treatment. We hope you will stay tuned to our future research.